and welcome. This is Chris. That's Angela, and this is the Spice. Spice. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Lie. Very good, Angela. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good today. Um, I took a much needed nap. You know, I needed my nap today. I was like a toddler. You know how when a toddler needs a nap, you right? Know, act a little different. <laughs> <laughs> I was acting a little different today because I was tired, so I mm. took a nap. So I'm feeling pretty good, feeling better. Good. You look refreshed. Thank you. Ready to go. I'm ready so to that's, go. That's good. Sometimes if we don't do that, or we haven't, you know, rough days and things get crazy. Sometimes we can find ourselves getting into a rut. Yes. And that's kind of what we wanted to uh, discuss, talk about, give insight to. One thing I forgot to say before we move on all right press that subscribe button subscribe mm -hmm. and like button. we can't forget to say that please support us pressing that button just, just press that button all right there you go there you go thank you for that <laughs> and right. yeah so if we don't let it catch us or get the best of yes. us things like that can can really get us down so what we want to look into is how did we, because it can creep up on you. It doesn't sometimes just happen. Sometimes we can wake mm -hmm. up feeling that way. Sometimes it can kind of slowly happen. But what are some of the signs? How do you know? And there's a <clears throat> site called the Master Class, and, mm -hmm. and it talks about um, things when it comes to uh, getting out of your wellness. Yes. It's related to your wellness. So how to get out of a rut. Mm -hmm. But let's just talk about it a bit. It says... Being emotionally stuck can lead, and this is uh, uh, something that we can look into, mm -hmm. but it says being emotionally stuck can lead to a lack of motivation or unhappiness. And then you learn about various causes of your mental state. And it's hard to sometimes be able to get out of, of a rut. And sometimes people may say, rut, what does that mean? It's a person in a rut that feels emotionally stagnant, lack of motivation or for everyday tasks. Um, the days may blur together. You may feel like you're operating on autopilot sometime, which can happen to any of us. And it's almost sometimes you can have um, uh, feelings of uh, burnout and it can affect you sometimes physically and mentally. Yes. And mm -hmm. it's just challenges on, on different levels, socially, mm -hmm. professionally, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So four signs you're stuck in a rut. Um, and Angela, you can kind of give us an idea of that. Sure. Um, and I've been in that before and Angela's been in those before, but you know, if we have time, we'll probably talk about that. Yeah. So four signs. Um, so if you want. All right. So this discontentment is one or more areas of life can lead to a person being in a rut. These are the following signs. One is a lack of inspiration and a lack of motivation or interest in hobbies, passions, and meaningful relationships may signify rut. So one of those um, I'm like to bring out, because I know I've been stuck in a rut in regards to this, <clears throat> but one of the things we'll talk about lack of hobbies. Um, um, what is that? Not lack of hobbies. Uh, <laughs> how did it say that? An interest in hobbies. Yeah. Sometimes when you're on that autopilot and especially if you got hobbies, sometimes you can just feel like you don't have time for a hobby. I mean, I could be so tired and things that I like to do. I'm not interested in it. I don't have a motivation to do that. So there are plenty of things that I was in, you know, that I like was so into, like I like decorating, you know. So sometimes I'm like. She's good at it too. Yeah. <laughs> you thank you yeah um but when my heart is in it i do such a great job and i like to do a lot of the diy things and i like to watch shows and stuff about it to get imp inspiration but i feel that when i'm in a rut then that was you know that's pushed aside because <laughs> i don't i don't know it's just it's like in that particular hobby or interest i have to be into it mm fully into it i can't mm -hmm. be like luster about it you know so yeah that's a good that's one of the good signs so another sign that can show that you're stuck in a rut is number two experiencing negative thoughts so think about that have you ever experienced negative thoughts and wonder what's going on there so it says if you feel your personal or professional life is not progressing you might experience negative thoughts or 
engage in negative self-talk. So it's kind of like you're developing or or getting a negative vibe. Now, this negativity can become an obstacle keeping you from achieving your goals. Mm. So a combination of these things are getting kind of slowly as this builds up in you can put you in a rut. That could be a sign. So it could be how you feel about uh, where you are. It could be work related. It can be financial related. It can be where you are socially. It can be where you are with yourself. But regardless, you're kind of stuck in this cycle of negative thoughts. So if you find yourself kind of easing into that area, you might be, and this happened, this happened to me. I can probably name a million times this happened to me. And it is hard to, especially as you get deeper into it, it's hard to pull out of that. Mm -hmm. But if you find that coming up on you, you might want to take a pause. So that's number two. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh And number three, it says an inability to complete tasks, simple tasks like Mm. the laundry and exercise may fall to the wayside. If you do not put your needs first, the deprioritization of yourself can be an indication of a rut. (laughs) So, yeah, I that one's good because you think about it tasks like laundry and st- not doing the laundry like or it could be any other household chore you know cleaning up your room you know and what's funny is we talk about rut that's kind of sounds like the the set of some some cases of depression when you just don't feel like doing anything you just right i'm not doing nothing i'm taking care of me no, I don't feel like no, doing the laundry. The you don't even take care of you because it's, yeah. about, like you said, it's a deep prioritizing yourself. That's you're true. You're no longer priority. So you deprioritize yourself, but you're right. It's like, I'm not doing nothing. Right. And I don't like, even feel like doing nothing for myself. Yeah, you think about it, it's a feeling like, I don't feel like doing anything. I don't feel like talking to anybody. Mm-hmm. And it's so easy to stay in that cycle. Yep. It's like you have to figure out and, I can attest to this personally. How can I get out of this rut? It's like. Even sometimes you don't know you in it, though. That's the right. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, by the time you probably realize you're deep in there. That's true. And when you're deep in it, in that rut, it's, it's hard. It's, it's very hard. And now this is like a cycle that never ends. Like you're constantly repeating things of the day, unmotivated, unhappy negative negative thoughts and just think about negative thoughts running through your head every day about whatever (laughs) whatever that is so sad and we've all been there so yeah wow interesting she's been there we've been there i've been there now number four it affects people differently some people like "Eh, i'm okay with that Mm -hmm. but number four because again depending on what the change is, this can have uh, affect me. Resistance to change. And what could that mean? That could mean two things. It could mean that you could aspire to want to create a change, but you know it's not going to be easy, or something where you know something is going to or has to change in your life or in your environment. But the thought of it or just the thinking ahead of it, even though it hasn't happened yet, can be overwhelming to you. And you feel like, man, this is not pleasant. This is going to be tough. This is going to be. And so you start talking yourself again into a rut. So think about that. Have you ever experienced that? Has that ever been something where you're thinking, oh, man, you know, I got to make a change. But uh. Mm, yeah, because it it requires effort. Yeah. You, if you're in a rut, you don't want to make an effort for nothing. You don't want nothing around you to change or nothing around you is changing. And I, I will have to say this. There was a time, a period of time in my life where I didn't want, like when you talk about change, it was a stress altogether. You know, my, my mind, I was on autopilot to be stressed about a change, you know, but it took it took a moment to get out of that type of thinking, especially when things haven't happened yet, you know, when things haven't even happened yet, but you anticipate change and that automatically set, maybe it's set into a rut, you know? So yeah, those were, those were some good ones. Those were good points about it. I forgot we shouldn't bring it early, but it doesn't matter. 
is a couple of definitions for a rut. Of course, you know, one rut is like a physical crevice or something. You're in um, a passage where you got the wheels keep running through it. That's a rut, like mm -hmm. a path almost. But the one we're talking about is uh, in the Oxford Language Dictionary, it's number two, a habit or pattern of behavior that has become dull or unproductive, but it's hard to change. And that comes back to what Angela was just talking about, the adjustments that you need to make when it comes to uh, making or adjusting to a change. But good stuff. How to get out of that. Um, so this is what you're feeling. So you, you feel, a, feel a lack of motivation, unfulfilled, um, your personal life or some sort of part aspect of your life. Here's some steps to follow. Number one, evaluate your situation. Mm -hmm. Look around, look around. And kind of see where you are. Slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the first step is uh, in getting out of this rut is to understand why you're in one in the first place. How did you kind of get here? How did we get here? Mm -hmm. As they say. Notice the signs and figure out what area of your life is causing discontentment. Which yeah. is a great place to start. Yeah. So that's number one. That's something for you to kind of examine. So basically it's saying do a self-examination. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. What, self examination what is always good. Mm -hmm. Self examination. <laughs> and, and when you do that, it's not yeah. one of those glance things. It's one of those things. That's why I said you got to yeah. kind of mm -hmm. and then start the process. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you got for number two? Angela? Number two says focus on your well-being to start feeling like yourself again, to develop a self care plan. Simply add one self care activity to your daily routine at a time. Mm -hmm. These activities might include making a healthy meal, going for a walk, or reading a book you love. Prioritizing your needs will help you feel more positive and promote self-love. So one, now that's something I'm working on. And for one thing, if you're like me, you wanna be more organized and wanna keep up <laughs> with things you're doing i actually saw some journals some self we call it self-care or um there's a lot of journals that you can do to help you with that with mm -hmm. the um what do you call it the self-care plans you can you can do a little plan for yourself and you can just add to it per day but um also you can look up some stuff online different come up with different lists of things that you can do for yourself i mean sometimes for me if if i want to if I'm trying to, you know, get myself out of rut, I'm going to need a list of things that I can do. Yeah. Also, some new things, you know, if I'm getting out of rut, I'm not going to do the same thing over and over right. again. So if I had a list of items or or things that I can look at that's different, that's going to help me and it's going to tailor to me personally because I'm doing the self-examination, then I'm going to, you know, do that. But there are some journals and stuff that you can do to help with that, so. And notice Angela mentioned that meal, and, and in particular she said healthy meal. Yeah. Because we may think, oh man, a meal, that might be good, but if sometimes we get a meal, and it's maybe uh, not the best meal, or we eat too much, that may not help us. So make sure that, uh, as mentioned before by Angela, um, it's, it's a healthy meal. Yeah. And uh, you'd be surprised that that just can start changing your mindset. Mm -hmm. If not mentally, definitely. Uh, physically yeah because we think about the healthy meal just as Chris mentioned about the healthy meal you when you eat good when you're eating right you're doing good for yourself your body is feeling well and like from our some of our previous uh, shows that we've had previous podcasts we talk about um, how food affects your body and that could help you come out the rut you know sometimes that rut could be eating junk food you know just sitting out it's so easy not cooking a healthy meal you know just grabbing those chips or cookies or whatever that you like whatever your cravings are but when you're eating healthy that helps with your mental thinking as well so remember earlier when it says one of the signs is that you may feel you need to change or you know you need to change mm -hmm. and it's a cringy feeling maybe yeah. but this actually taking on taking the bull by the horn so to speak is number three because it's kind of connected to the sign mm -hmm. but it's also the answer mm -hmm. sometimes we have to pull the bootstraps up as it were 
and get outside our comfort zone. This is number three, get outside your comfort zone. So in your free time, get outside the zone, uh, make your best effort to try something new. Yes. And, you know, take a class. I think one of the mentionings, uh, you can add it to this too, that Angela mentioned, read a book, take a class, find a new restaurant, maybe a hobby. I think Angela mentioned that too. All these things um, can make a difference. New home, you know, putting something different in the home, things like that. You'll be surprised if it just, you know, take a little time again, a little effort. Mm -hmm. You can find ways to step outside your comfort zone, which I think I I have to do sometimes. That's not an easy thing for me to do at all. Yeah. But it's important. That we've done better at that. Right. Both of us, I think we've yeah. improved in that. So I would agree. Over time and I, and actually to be honest with you, each and every time we step out of that comfort zone, uh, it was a positive thing for it. You yeah. know, you just gotta do it. <laughs> step sure. outside of that comfort zone. Step outside that box. Yeah. So number four, it says look for a change of scenery. So it says, introduce small changes to your routine by changing your scenery to break the monotony. Go outside, work remotely from a coffee shop or plan a vacation. Mm. (laughs) Yes, I definitely recommend that. Plan those vacations, y'all. Get out there. And when you have something to look forward to, like a vacation, I mean, even if you do like a little countdown or something reminds you of it, you can prepare for it. That gets you out of that, you know, rut of thinking negative. You're like, oh, let me plan for this. Oh, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to do that. And when it talks about, you know, oh, especially when you're working remotely, sometimes coming out of uh, of your home office or wherever you normally sit, will help you know if you're traveling around the house you can like i said go to a coffee shop if that's if that's possible or just you know if you if it's not possible i know some folks they work and they have to be at their desk taking those little small breaks going outside you know going outside for a few minutes getting a breath of fresh air helps it helps so um, I like that, the change of scenery. I found that when we do that, you know, and I know, and I'm speaking for, I know the both of us and for me, you know, cause sometimes right. we're like, let me tell you some, some <laughs> things. <laughs> All right, let me, let me do like a little short story time here. Short story stuff, time. Stuff dime, I, dime, th- dime. I thought about. <laughs> Uh, Christopher and I, um, you know, we have a big family. We all, you know, we have a family of six, but sometimes, and I'm going to speak for myself. Hey, let's get up out of this camp. <laughs> let's go. Yes, I need a change of scenery. Yes, ma'am. For sure. It's just because, I mean, it, it don't it don't have to do with yes. the fact that, you know, of anybody, you know, getting them out of the, it's just the fact that I just need to get out. I need to get away. I need to get out of the house, mm-hmm. period. It don't mean Gotta that anybody said away. anything to me, got on my nerves. I just need to get out of this camp. I just need to go somewhere, you know, go Gotta somewhere to eat. Out. You know, let me go and get mm-hmm. a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Someone, let's go, let's let's get a let's change go. of scenery. Yeah. My body or my brain, my mind tells me, let's get out of this let's camp. Roll. Let's go, let's mm-hmm. roll. <laughs> and each and every time, and roll each and every time that I said that, Chris is ready to roll. He said, yeah, let's Team do this. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate that. Yeah, let's do this. Let's get out of here. Ready. Sometimes she said, let's go get some coffee and take a vacation at the same time. So we go to Paris <laughs> and have coffee. No, I'm but it might do that one day. You never know. But, yep, uh, she's right about that. Yeah. And number five is being appreciative. I appreciate it. I appreciate a lot of things. But not only being appreciative, it's, it's, it's somebody said, well, how you do that? What, you know, what we got to do? It's, it's encouraging you, and number five, to practice gratitude. So when you start doing this, the process of doing this is if writing writing down maybe a journal mm-hmm. or you can write down just little sentences, yes. little phrases, say them in your mind, not only say them, but believe them. Say, you can say them to us t- towards another uh, person, but fo- the priority is to focus on you first. So practice gratitude for yourself because the goal is to kind of get your core, get you back going and get you kind of rejuvenated, put the feel back into you 
And then once that car is rolling, then things get done. And yeah. that's really what you got to do. And if you think about it, of all the, the moments that you're in the rut, there's negative thoughts going there. So you got to change that up. You got to replace those negative thoughts with positive thoughts that's going to help you. And I know sometimes I'll, sit, I'll be sitting in one place. And I can just be like, especially if I'm just sitting in one place and it's early in the morning or it's just a place where I'm just sitting there and I just feel like uh, I'm just sitting here just not with nothing. And all of a sudden I will see something that motivates me. And like Chris was mentioning in this, talking about um, journaling um, it or when you see a, 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 a quote that is um, very upbuilding that helps more because i'm gonna tell you sometimes it could just be a quote or something someone said chris could walk in the room and say something that jokes my energy or jokes that 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 um battery or someone you would say practice gratitude or doing an act of kindness to you and they probably don't think nothing of it but they've helped you in so many different in so many ways so yeah it works. It works. It may take some time. A good illustration is to think about like if you're looking at a map, a, a real life map, like a satellite map, but your eye right now is focused on an area where there's desert. What you have to do is do things to get your focus off the desert and notice the, the jungle or notice the beautiful waters and the other activities and the mountains and the majestic things going on and all the other beautiful things as you look down on this map or this planet or this globe. Instead of just having your focus on that desert or that muddy area, as it were. Yes. And that's really, and it takes effort. But once you start that process, you'll forget to forget about that, what that area even was, if you think about it. So, yeah. Anyway. And if you think about it, too, when you said something about muddy area, desert, I, I, what came to mind to me was you got to get out that dark place. A dark place. That yeah, quick, gotta, you mean, I think you said quicksand earlier, yeah, let's too. Let's get out that quicksand. Let's yeah. get out of it. <laughs> if you stay in it long enough and get down in it, it'll be nothing but darkness. Yeah, yeah. which is not good. What's yep. it? Number six, it says, set small goals. Think of realistic goals you can accomplish in a short period of time and take small steps to achieve them. Showing yourself you can make progress and do things you love will boost your self-esteem and help you feel a sense of purpose. Yeah. So example of that could be like, you know what? I, think I'll make, um, I haven't made a nice little meal in a while. Wow. We're talking about healthy meals. So, you know, a little a little healthy something. I hadn't done that in a while. I'm, I'm going to get up and do that. Mm -hmm. That's a small goal. And then you accomplish it. You feel good. You're having a healthy meal. You actually said you was going to do it and you did it. Uh -huh. He said, you know what? I think I'm going to buy a chair. I want to put a chair in this area of the room. And you actually go and get it. You've accomplished a lot of things. You went outside the zone. You you changed something in the house. And you accomplished an actual goal. But the most important to do is just try to think of something small. You don't have to change the world. But just something really, really doable and small in that moment where you're having that rut or rough patch. And you'll be surprised the difference it'll make to say, oh, man, I did that. Yes. Yeah. And feel good about it. maybe it had an impact on somebody around you. If Angela brings something new and nice in here and she put her, her, her designer skills to work, it always makes me feel good. Well, that's, that is great to hear because I got tons no. of ideas and stuff. I'm going to bring her to this space. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. Put some space <laughs> in your face. Where did this come from? Hey. Hey. This is you know, my thing. We, did, we, we, talk, we, we talked about this. Designer. We discussed this. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing to that I'm going to add yeah, sure. is the fact that today, that happened today with me. Really? Because the grandbaby, our grandbaby, uh, was in my office, it's you know, grandbaby. today, and of course she, you know, she makes her 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 my office her own, you know, right. toys everywhere. Mm. When I completed, you know, stuff Super. that I had to do for the day, Super. and I looked mm -hmm. at my office, I'm like, I could just walk up out of here mm. and just not clean up or you know straighten things out. Mm -hmm. By that time, she she with mom, um, grandbabies with mom and dad mm -hmm. now. <laughs> And I could just go to my room and chill out. Or I mean, we had some things that we had to do. Right. But anyway, so I'm like, all right. Oh, to do. But then my mind settled and I thought this. I was like, if I, I would feel so good or I feel better. How would I feel if I just walk out of here and not do it? But then I said, how would I feel if I just go ahead and just straighten this out? Put these toys where they need to be. 
And I was like, I feel better. Because when I come back into that room, I won't feel the stress. I felt I felt that when I said, hey, when I come back into this room and look at all, all, all these toys on the floor, then I'm setting oh, no, myself for up oh. for, a negative, <laughs> for a negative start of a day. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> if I'm walking in here, there's toys like, everywhere. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'll be. And then it rehashed back to that. Yeah, thing. and I'm like, I should have picked this stuff up. You know, mm -hmm. I'm making it go into the next well, what day. Why are you picking it up? Like she's putting it, messing it back up. Well, that's what she up? does. That's why I don't do I mean, anything like, while, she, the grandbaby. <laughs> while she's the, messing while, up while I'm cleaning. While the grandbaby <laughs> is in the <laughs> office, I let her. Because what happened as soon as I put pick it up. And while she's in there and put it up where it needs to be, she'll go take it back out and put it back wherever she wants it. So, so you bring you bring new, <laughs> new meaning to the I'm picking up what she's putting down. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, people. Yes. So what about seven? What do you get? What does it tell us? There? Seven says spend time with loved ones, mm -hmm. schedule time with friends and family and open up mm -hmm. to them about your feelings. Mm -hmm. Talking to others about what you're experiencing and feeling can be helpful. Yes. 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 And I'm going to say this too. If there are things, if you're feeling overwhelmed about, you know, I wouldn't, I would say this, be blunt and be upfront about things that you can't do, you know, because that'll cause stress if you put too much on yourself. And you can talk about that too with your family and friends. They'll understand and they'll give you some some advice on what you should do. But don't overwhelm yourself. You know, spend time with them. Talk about it. You know, just be upfront. Be yourself. You know, have some really blunt and open. Is that open up? Have those open conversation with them because you never know what they'll say. I'm telling you this. I've done this with family and friends. I was that way, and they helped me out so much especially during the pandemic they helped me out so much with a lot of things that i was you know thinking about and trying to you know figure figure through because you never know who's gone through that and has so much to offer in in terms of advice or where they share your their experiences with you oh you know they had to happen before and that draws you like okay oh okay you know, because some things I, I'm an overthinker, so I'm going to need to undo some little overthinking that I've already done about things. And when I talk to people, the, the family, friends about what's going on, including my hubby, <laughs> they put things in pers perspective for me. And I've learned to respect others, um, what you call it, um, others opinions or others what others say and i take it to into consideration without constantly oh no that's not gonna work for me or finding criticism about what people say you have to accept things you know and correct them correct yourself self-examination <laughs> yeah so there you go guys um it was I was going to mention something, but but I forgot. I can't it can't come to me now. But um, and then they of, of course always seek professional help and yes. things like that. But it was something I wanted to mention. But I probably I it's related to friends. So okay. yeah. So yeah, yeah. so we're, we're that's what we we're going to talk. We we're going to talk. Hopefully we'll that's something we'll talk about next time. Yes. Um, the time flies when you're having a good time. Yes, it does. And we enjoyed you guys. Yeah, Thanks for I being know. with Thank us. Thank you. And hopefully this helps uh, deal with those things. You're not alone. Sometimes we get down in those ruts. We get in those little yes. tough positions. But there's always options and ways out. Knowing that you're getting in and knowing yes. how to get out is very important. And we just wanted to add a little spice to life. This yes, is Chris. And I'm Angela. And this has been The Spice. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Life.